Hi everyone, my name is Andy So a UCT medical student. Welcome, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you, thank you so much for watching one of my videos once again. And if you are here for the second time or the third time, but you still haven't subscribed, please do the right thing and subscribe and if you are new here i would like to welcome you i hope you do stay and become a part of my journey as i become dr andy so on this channel i share my journey as a uct medical student through med school vlogs and i also share useful information about medicine for those who are interested in studying medicine and i also do study tips so if that's the kind of content you are interested in please be sure to click that subscribe button and turn all notifications on first of all i would like to thank you for 25,000 subscribers i cannot believe we did this in two months the growth of this channel has been insane your support has been so amazing your interaction with my content i cannot express how i feel i am so grateful and i am so thankful for you guys thank you thank you thank you so much so if you are new here i've already uploaded a video explaining how i got seven distinctions in my cheek and that video blew up it is currently over 230,000 views on youtube so if you haven't checked that video out please do check it out most people found it useful i also shared a video on how to get a distinction in mathematics and how i got 98 percent in physical sciences in metric so if you haven't watched those videos please go back and watch those videos so today i come back with one of the most requested videos study tips for life sciences i am going to be sharing with you videos that i used during my high school years these are the study tips that help me get an average of 92% in life sciences and metric with a 99% in term one and also I think a 99% in term three grade 11. If there was ever one subject that I would get a random 99% here and there, it is definitely life sciences because I think I knew how to study the subject, I knew how to make notes, I knew how to revise the subject. So this is what I am going to be sharing with you today. So on this video, I'm going to be sharing with you how to take notes effectively, how to study, how to test your knowledge, how to keep on interacting with your notes throughout the term or throughout the year, how to use your notes in terms of doing homeworks and assignments, how to revise for your exams, and last but not least, share with you the golden tip that helped me achieve those 90s in high school. So let's get into it. The first thing you want to do before studying any topic is to read the learning objectives. This will tell you what you need to know by the end of the chapter, what is expected from you, and it gives you a guide as you study or go through the work. Because you don't want to go in there blindly and literally learning every single point, even the points that are not important. So what you need to do first is write down your learning objectives. They're usually found at the beginning of your textbook or at the end. Now I'm going to show you how to take notes effectively. The first thing you want to do is browse through the content. So you're going to note any keywords or definitions, any diagrams, any flowcharts, any tables, because that is where the core content is at. Any words that are in between that are literally describing what is happening in the tables, the flowcharts, and so on. As we all know that life sciences is a study of living organisms and processes that take place in living organisms. Each and every topic that you're going to study, there is going to be a process that is happening. Either it is a process that brings life or it is a process that happens within a living organism. For example, how reproduction happens, how ovulation happens, how digestion is happening, how a seed grows into a plant. All of those are processes. So what you need to do is that before you study that topic, ask yourself, what is the process that I'm actually learning about in this topic? Because that is possibly going to be your essay topic. As you're reading your textbook, note important keywords and definitions. Number two, note down all the labeled diagrams. Number three, you are going to take 
any content that is in tables or flow charts that is what you need on your notes a summary after you have your keywords all the label diagrams and all the flow charts and tables that you find on your notes now you have to create your additional notes or create your own notes on top of that as you are reading through your notes please note any content that is comparable for example if they are comparing a spam cell and an x cell make sure that you take such information and put it on a table that helps you visualize the work and will help you with your memory later instead of writing it in sentences and paragraphs use a table if there's any process that is happening for example menstruation or fertilization make sure that you write it in a flow chart for you to be able to understand what happens from this step to the next step instead of writing it in paragraphs also when it comes to your diagrams don't only memorize the labels go back and study the function of each label you can put it in a table just like in this example and this helps you to remember things quite easily and when it comes to complicated diagrams like this you want to break it down from process to process when you are making your notes write down detailed notes as possible and make sure you understand every process that is happening on the diagram for example, you want to know on which day does menstruation okay, which day does ovulation okay, when does the luteinizing hormone and the follicle stimulating hormone peak in the cycle. All of those key points in the process are important and they might ask you as one word questions. So let's recap. First, you want to write down all your keywords and definition. Secondly, you want to take down all your labeled diagrams. Thirdly, you want to take down any information that is in tables or flowcharts. And you want to add your own notes by making sure that you're using short sentences as possible. And you put information that is being compared in tables. And you make sure that for every label that you have, you have the function for it and when it comes to your complicated diagrams make sure that you understand all the processes that are happening in that diagram and make sure that you write them in systematic order so after you've done writing down your notes now you want to test your knowledge the first thing you can do is create a template for your notes meaning you have all the diagrams that you've written on your notes all the key concepts all the tables but the information is not filled in, meaning it is blank. So what you need to do is fill in everything that you remember from the definitions of the keywords to the labels of the diagram to the comparison of all the stuff that you've put in tables to the functions and to describing the processes that are happening in those complicated diagrams. And please make sure that when you study processes or complicated diagrams, make sure that you understand what is happening on that diagram to a point where you can literally write an essay from just looking at the diagram. So what you have to do is focus on understanding instead of memorizing the concepts. So the second method that you can use to test your knowledge is using flashcards. The third way to test your knowledge is using exercise questions. These can be from your textbooks or study guide at the end of the chapter or during your chapter. So what you need to do is after reading and understanding the concept, you will want to answer the questions based on that concept. Please make sure that you do not leave any topic after studying without testing your knowledge by answering the questions related to that topic. This will help all the information stick in your head because it tests you how much you can remember and how much you actually paid attention on the content. The next thing is how to keep on interacting with your notes. You might be able to take notes effectively, but if you are not going to keep on interacting with your notes and only see them a week before your exams, your efforts will go down the drain. So you have to learn on how to interact with your notes throughout the term. So the first thing you need to do is make sure that all the stuff that you do for that subject is kept in one notebook. Make sure that everything that you do for that subject, it is recorded on 
that notebook For example if a teacher is teaching in class you have to take out your notes that you made about that topic and add important points that your teacher is saying on those notes and if you're gonna go and watch a youtube video or do extra studying using an extra resource make sure that any additional information that you find about that topic you put it on the same notes do not have like seven pieces of notes scattered everywhere talking about the same topic another thing that you want to do is use those notes that you've made to write your homeworks this helps you see what information you've left out or what information is missing from your notes it helps you interact more with your notes and familiarize yourself with your notes and this boosts your memory also using your notes to write your homeworks means that you are using notes that you understand to answer questions and you are interacting with your notes instead of copying and pasting from a textbook you've never read from simply because you want those answers so if a homework is asking you a question that you can't answer using your notes make sure that you add that information on your notes as well so that you build a collection of information about that topic so now we've come to the point where i share with you how to revise for your exams or how to study for your exams last minute if your exams are in a month or in a few weeks time and you do not have time to go through the process of making notes from term one if you haven't been consistent number one what you need to do is find a youtube channel or a youtube video that summarizes topics very well in a short period of time so that you save your time from making notes and number two you have to go and find websites that have summarized notes another thing you can do is instead of studying the whole chapter on your textbook go at the end where they are having a summary of what they've been telling you about that helps you grasp the key concept about the topic and it will save you so much time and you will still get at least 60% of what you were supposed to know from that topic. The fourth thing that you want to do is do past papers. Even if you have no knowledge about a certain topic, trust me, a past paper can save your life. And when you are using your past paper, you are only exposed to questions that they could possibly set in your exam. Right now, I'm going to be sharing with you the golden tip that helped me to get those 90s in high school. And it is how to actually do your past papers. A lot of people will tell you, just do past papers, just do past papers. But it is in how you actually do the past papers that helps you. So firstly, what you need to do is study topic by topic. Find three previous question papers that you're going to use for the certain period of time or either this week or either this coming two weeks. So what you need to do is, for example, if today you're studying reproduction, make sure that you are answering reproduction questions from each paper. You don't want to mix and match topics and past papers make sure that from all these three past papers that i have i am answering reproduction question in this paper that paper and that paper and make a collection of question and answer in that way it helps you create all the possible scenarios or all the possible questions that can ever test on that topic and it helps you with your memory now let's say you've done that or you are confident with your work now you can do a full paper from question one up until the end i loved to do this just before my exam so that i can test myself and see where i stand so what you do is take a past paper that you've never done before print it out or you can use your computer or tablet make sure that you do not have a memo or you've never seen the memo before take out a paper and answer that question put three hours if that's the duration of your exam and make sure that you answer all the questions like you're in an exam and at the end of it mark the paper and see how many marks you've got in order for you to get very good marks in life sciences you need to make sure that you study the subject consistently 
you consistently interact with your work you consistently test your knowledge in that way that information will stick into your brain and you cannot do all of that without an effective study timetable or a study schedule so i've made a video explaining how you can do a revision study timetable please do check out the video if you haven't and make sure you create your own study timetable so we've come to the end of the video i hope you found this video useful if you have any questions please type them down below the comments section i will be glad to answer your questions please don't forget to like comment and subscribe and share this video with your friends or your classmates i'd really really appreciate it i'll see you again on another video bye